Eliminate. Eliminate the fractions. This can be done by identifying the LCD. Multiplying each term or both sides by that LCD. What's going to happen when I do that? That will eliminate it. Then you'll have a nice normal question. question. You can simplify, solve. And then the most important thing, that's why we've been talking about non-permissible values from the very get-go, is we need to check for non-permissible values. Sometimes we'll actually get a solution and it happens to be a non-permissible value and we will have to reject it. And you can also check your solutions by substituting, I'm putting subtracting, substituting, or subbing into the original equation. Subbing in, in the original equation. So the problem that a lot of people are doing is they're subbing in maybe the second or third step. You need to sub to the original, the one that has not been touched, okay? So, let's try an example. What would the LCD be in this example? Yeah, the two things multiplied together. X minus 1, X plus 5. That's what happened to your quiz today, right? They were the, just the two that were multiplied together. Okay, so now... Does everybody understand this is now an equation, it's not an expression, so we can actually do the algebra tricks where we multiply both sides to start eliminating, make things easier to solve, right? So what I'm going to do now, and this is how it changes, we're not actually going to try to add stuff together and all this stuff. I don't like fractions when I'm solving, so I'm going to get rid of the fractions by multiplying by the LCD. Um, so I'm going to write out the question. Leave a space here so you have um, some room. I'm going to multiply my LCD in red. So my LCD is x minus 1 times x plus 5 to both sides. That's the trick about um, algebra is whatever you do to the left side, if you do it to the right side, it's all legit. You're not killing any puppies or anything like that. So... Um, one of my esteemed colleagues coined the phrase, the magic multiplier. The reason why he called it the magic multiplier, do you know who I'm talking about? Mr. Moore. <laughs> um, he called it the magic multiplier is if you multiply um, both sides by the LCD, what happens? Magic happens. Do you see? X minus 1 and X minus 1 will cancel and then you don't have a fraction there. That's why it's magic. And what happens on the right side? x plus 5 and x plus 5 cancels, magic, the fraction's gone, and now I'm left with x plus 5 times minus 2 equals 1 times x minus 1. I'm just showing all my steps. You wouldn't actually probably write this step. Okay. So now what do we do? We simplify. There's a whole bunch of brackets there we don't need. So multiply the negative 2 into both of those terms here. I'm going to go back to blue. And what do you get? Negative 2x minus 10 equals, this 1 doesn't do anything, x minus 1. How do we solve for the variable? We move the x's to one side, the constants to the other. So if I move this x over to this side, what do I get? Negative 3x. If I move the 10 over to the other side, what do I get on the other side? 9. And then last step we get x equals negative 3. And we need to state our non-permissibles. Usually we should do that at the beginning. So what, what is my non-permissibles? X cannot equal 1 and negative 5. So check, does that contradict what we just said? No, so this is a legit solution. What else is the nice thing about algebra? We can guarantee 100% by just checking our answer. So let's sub it back into the original. The original was, the left side was negative 2 over x minus 1. I'm saying x is negative 3, so negative 3 minus 1. What do I get there? 
negative 2 over negative 4, which is 1 half. Now, if the right side equals 1 half, I know I did it right. So the right side, what does the right side say? 1 over x plus 5. So 1 over negative 3 plus 5 it is 1 over 2. Hey, they're the same. I just guaranteed myself I did it 100% correct. Look at that. Okay. Let's try the next example. Do you guys want to try this yourself? Yes, let's do it. Did everybody see you can actually combine those first? It's a lot easier if you recognize that. So 5 minus 4 is 1 over 2x equals 3. So my LCD is 2x. So I'm multiplying 2x to both sides. Right? The magic multiplier. And what am I left with? 1 is equal to 6x, so x is equal to 1 over 6. What's my non-permissible value? x cannot equal 0. Is that that? No. So then somebody said, how do you, how do you um, check your solution? It's a little harder, but you can still do it. So my left side is 5 over 2 times 1 6. Subtract 4 over 2 times 1 6. So first off, what is 2 times 1 6? Huh? What's 2 times 1 6? How about 1 3rd? Oh. You guys, 2 over 1 times 1 over 6. It's a cross cancel, right? 2 6 1 3rd. 1 3rd. It's not magic. I showed you that the other day. Okay, so this is 5 divided by 1 3rd. What does that equal to? And this is 4 divided by 1 third. Here, I'll show you a little trick. Here's a trick that you might like. Do you know if you're dividing by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying the reciprocal? What's the reciprocal? 3. So this is 5 times 3. 15 minus 12 is 3. Okay, and then on the other side you get 3. Well, that's what the right-hand side is, so you know you did it right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So what's my common denominator, LCD? 7 times x plus 2. So x over x plus 2 times 7 times x plus 2 equals 5 over 7 times 7x plus 2. Does everybody see what I did there? Um. Now I'm going to cross cancel. Cross, cross. Cross, cross. Does everybody see that? What am I left with on the left hand side? 7x. What am I left with on the right hand side? 5 times x plus 2. Can you do that? Can you multiply it? So 5x plus 10. Move the 5x over, we get. 2x equals 10. So what does x equal? 5. Non-permissible value again was x cannot equal negative 2. Nothing else. So that's legit. Let's check our answer here. 5 goes in there. What do we get on my left-hand side? 5 over 5 plus 2. What's that equal to? 5 over 7. Hey, that's my right-hand side. I did it right. Yeah? Okay, keep going. Can you add these two together? It has a common denominator, so do it. It's way easier if you do it. What's x minus 1 plus 2? Yeah, x plus 1 over 2x. Okay, keep going. See then? Um, so my LCD is 2x, so I'm going to multiply this by 2x and 2x. My 2x's cancel, I'm left with x plus 1 equals 4x, so 1 equals 3x, x equals 1 third. My non-permissible is x cannot equal 0, so that's good. Now, again, some people are having trouble checking. 
you could say, oh, it's too hard to check because it's fractions this time, but you still can't. One third subtract one over two times one third. What's one third subtract one? One third subtract one. Negative two thirds, very good. And what's two times one third? Two, you guys, you're scaring me. It's not two times three, it's two times one third. Two over three, thank you. And what is two over three with a negative divided by positive two over three? Negative one. So now let's go to the right hand side. Well, oh, that that was just the first fraction, sorry. So, <laughs> so now I have to do two over two times one third. So that's two divided by two thirds. What's two divided by two thirds? Flip it. You don't get six. Flip this. No. Flip the two thirds. Do you see the twos? Yes, you get three. So now it's negative one plus three. What do we get? Two. So my LCD is x minus two times x plus four. So one over x minus two times x minus two times x plus four equals five over x plus four times x minus two times x plus four. Cancel, 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 cancel. So then I get x plus four equals five x minus 10. Didn't I just do this question? Minus four x equals minus 14. Oh, it's different. 14 over four, which is seven over two. Seven over two? Yeah. Okay, so let's check here. Oh, first off, what's my NPVs? Two and negative four. So that's not one of my answers. One of these times, one of them are going to match. Just saying. Okay, my check, some people are having trouble with the check. One over seven over two, subtract two. What do you have to do when you're subtracting fractions? You need the same denominator, that's 4 over 2. So what's 7 over 2 minus 4 over 2? 3 over 2. What's a little trick? Flip and multiply, you get 2 thirds, right? So that's my left side. 5 over 7 over 2 plus 4. Again, common denominator would be 8 over 2. 7 over 2 plus 8 over 2 is 15 over 2. This one might be harder to see the flip and multiply, so I'm going to write it out. Five times flip, two over 15. You see the five fifteenths cancel, one third. So you get two thirds, which is the same, so it checks. Yeah? Okay, next one, what's my LCD? X minus 1 times X plus 3. Are you guys at the point where do you need to show the step of multiplying? Okay, so you know that the bottoms will cancel. And this left side is going to be X plus 1 times whatever the leftover is. So that would be X plus 3, yes. And then this bottom is going to cancel with that. So I'm left with x minus 1 times x minus 1. Yes? So how do I solve something that looks like this? I need to multiply it out, right? x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. What do we do when we have an x squared? We need to move it over to one side so it equals 0 when we have a quadratic. That's what we learned in the previous units, right? However, if I move the x squared over to the other side, what happens with the x squares? They actually cancel, so this is even better. Move the minus 2x over to the other side, I get 6x. Move the 3 over to the other side, I get minus 2. So what does x equal? Negative 2 over 6, which is negative 1 third. Yes? Yes. 
This might be a little bit harder to, to check. What's my NPV, though? One or negative three cannot equal. Do you want me to check it? Well, I think we should. This is how you guarantee yourself 100%, you guys. So, negative one third plus one over negative one third minus one. What's negative one third plus one? If you have one and you subtract a third, what do you got? Two thirds, right? What about negative one and a negative one third? Negative one and one third? Negative four over three? Does everybody see how I'm doing this in my head? Okay, so now I'm going to flip and multiply. So I'm going to show my work just so you can see. Two thirds times three over negative four. The threes cancel, the two and the four cancels, and I'm left with negative one half. But actually, you should get to the point where if you have a fraction divided by a fraction, if the denominators are the same, they actually cancel. You see two divided by negative four is negative one half. Isn't that a little... Well, start looking for those things, right? Okay, the other side is negative one-third subtract one over negative one-third plus three. So again, what's negative one-third and negative one? Negative one and one-third, which is negative four over three. And if I have three and I take away one-third, I will have two and two-thirds. What's two and two-thirds as a improper? Two and two-thirds as improper. Six, eight over three. Look at my little trick again. The threes are the same. Bam, bam. Negative four eighths is the same thing as negative one half. Look at they're the same. Wish you knew what? Okay. I see a lot of people having trouble with this LCD here. Did you know the LCD is 2x times 2x plus 1? Ask yourself if you don't believe me. Does 2x go into this? Yes. Does 2 go into this? Yes. Does 2x plus 1 go into this? Yes. Do you see why it works? Yes. So again, I'm not going to uh, show the step where I multiply each and every one. Just know when you're multiplying each side, when you have two terms on that side, it's a distributor property. You're multiplying that and that by the LCD, the magic multiplier, right? So. If I multiply x minus 2 over 2x plus 1 times my LCD, what am I left with? The 2x minus plus 1 cancels, and it's going to be 2x times x minus 2. Is everybody okay with the left-hand side? What happened there? Are we at that point? We can do that. Okay. So now the 1 half, forget about this plus whatever. The 1 half, what's going to cancel in my LCD? The 2 and this 2 are going to cancel. What am I left with? x times 2x plus 1, and if you want, you can have times this 1 that's already there. I'll put the 1 there just for fun. Okay, then I have a denominator that's a 2x. It's going to cancel with this 2x, and I'm going to have this left times x minus 3, right? I feel like I might have lost somebody by doing, not showing that step. I don't know. What do you think? You good? You guys rock. Okay. Continue. Solve. Right? So 2x squared minus 4x equals 2x squared plus x plus 2x squared. This is a foil. So plus 1x minus 6x is minus 5x minus 3. Yes? So I'm going to combine the one side. What? Because I do a FOIL, minus is minus 6x plus 1x. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to move the x squared onto one side. I can try to move everything onto one side just because I know it's an, um, a, a, a quadratic. So I'm going to move these over then. So I'm going to get 0 equals 2x squared. These actually cancel minus 3. So at this point, hopefully you know how to solve a quadratic. You don't need to try to factor. You can't factor. But you knew another method besides factoring, completing the square, and quadratic formula. And that was just solving for the square, right? So move the 3 over. 
Some people are confused. I think they square root first, then they then they divide by two. If you square root it first, do you understand that you're gonna get the square root of two on this side with the x? So divide by two first. You get three over two equals x squared. Last step, x equals plus or minus the square root of three over two. Now, now that we've had the radical unit, we're not supposed to have a radical as a denominator. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to rationalize the denominator. It's a thing. So what would I rationalize this by? Root 2 over root 2. Yes? So then what do I get? Plus or minus? What's root 3 times root 2? Root 6. And what's root 2 times root 2? 2. So then that would be your final answer. Since when do we do that? Since now. Thank you.